Hi everyone, eating some chocolate here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Dean Blunt album, Black Metal 2. This is the latest full-length LP of one of the UK's most enigmatic artists, Dean Blunt. Singer and songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, producer, as well as rapper, he returns to us after seven years since his last full-length solo LP. Now, he has not been totally in the shadows over that course of time. We had his foray into UK hip-hop under the Baby Father moniker as well as collaborations with the likes of Delroy Edwards and Joanne Robertson, whose voice turns up numerous times on this project. He also dropped some sort of under-the-radar mixtapes in 2019, a very satisfying archival release in 2020, and that's just some of what Dean has been up to since the release of his last record, which he's calling back to on this latest one here, titling it Black Metal 2. Now, if you're out of the loop, the predecessor to this record is obviously Black Metal, a 2014 album that is one of my favorite LPs of the 2010s. Really a masterclass in minimal, dreamy, cryptic art pop with some really experimental twists and turns. For the most part, I have nothing but praise for this record. I've been enjoying it for years, even though after all this time, it's difficult to quantify some of the reasons why on account of just how strange uh, the experience uh, listening to it is. You know, this LP contains an otherworldly sound, like many of Dean's projects, that I can only refer to as Bluntian. The fact that everything Dean touches seems to exist in its own separate sonic universe makes his music a lot more methodical than it actually may seem on the surface. And of course, I was excited to get another helping of that, even with the cheeky sequel title. But going into this, I was kind of shocked to see that Black Metal 2 is about half the length of its predecessor, which I suppose could be due in part to there not being a 21-minute block taken up by two lengthy experimental pieces Pieces. But I think there's one more reason this project is a little short, and for the most part, uh, sonically and stylistically, Dean seems to focus the tracks here on a very specific sound and vibe from the original black metal record. The more lyrically driven and guitar driven songs from that record are mostly what we seem to be kind of touching down on here. Now, there could be conceptual reasons for this, considering the consistency of some themes among these tracks, or it could just be that after all of these years, these are the sounds and ideas from the original black metal that have meant the most to Dean. Maybe these types of tracks and sounds and stories were really what the original black metal was about or what he found to be most profound about that record or worth digging into again. Having said that though, while I think the bulk of the material here is pretty good, oftentimes I am left wanting more on either specific tracks or just the record overall. From the storytelling on Mugu, whose narrative involves building tensions surrounding a scam, a scammer choosing his marks, doing the deed, and then after that kind of leaving us on a cliffhanger. I love the gentle beats and angular spark sparkling guitars on this track, as well as how Dean's overdubbed deadpan vocals hit the mix. I just wish there was a little bit more length to it. I found the track Semtex to be similarly scant, which was a little disappointing because I love the vaguely noisy and industrial sounds and percussion hanging in the background, as well as those twisted, eerie guitar leads. There's also the matter of Dean's cold-blooded and deadly spoken word on this track, which sees him locked away in a place of darkness and despair. And once more on this track, we have a climax and then a break-off with the protagonist of the track setting off an explosive? But what happens past this point, I guess, is left up to the imagination. Now, sometimes Dean's narrative motifs read a bit more clearly, like in the case of the song Vigil, which is a chilling meditation on death, specifically in regards to a mother losing her son. Then we also hear Dean sing about this spiral of depression, drugs, and bleak existentialism on the track Nil by Mouth. But the passages of this record that really resonated with me were the ones I found to be the most immersive, like the track Sketamine, which was pretty enveloping with its mesmerizing drums, deep resonant bass, droning synth layers, beckoning guest vocals. Whole thing kind of sounds like one of those acid trips that when you're done with it, you, you kind of, uh, have some kind of self-actualization and, and you really get your, your shit together. Then there's also the pensive instrumental passage, Wusa, which features some melancholy acoustic guitars, gentle bass, metallic tones kind of swelling and calling out into the oblivion. The title of this track, interestingly enough, is in reference to calming down, taking it down a notch, or relaxing, which is uh, referenced in the opening lines of the closing track, The Rot. This track also makes reference to leaving someone, which is another sort of mini 
signature theme on these songs. Referenced also on the very bold track Zaza, whose second half uh, shifts suddenly into what feels like a surreal dream sequence. But to get back to the immersiveness of these tracks, that closing track is really like the most blissful moment on this LP, and it's just truly gorgeous. The casually strummed guitars, the bright distant strings, as well as Joanne Robertson's heavenly background vocals. But yes, as brief as this record is, the lyrical themes of it are pretty intriguing, and with each listen, I just sort of hear and notice more connections between each track. But for the most part, each song here seems to give a really quick, brief snapshot of an intense or emotionally devastating moment, and then just kind of leave the listener there hanging with that without any sort of feeling of resolution or development. And once more, I think it's a testament to Dean's storytelling, songwriting, and sonic alchemy abilities that the tracks on this project connect with each other in these interesting and subtle ways. But I still did come away from this feeling like Black Metal 2 is almost like three-fourths or four-fifths of an original black metal. Due to, again, just wanting more out of some tracks and, and the whole experience overall being a bit too meager. Still, I'm feeling a strong 7 to a light 8 on this one. Tran? Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Dean Blunt, forever.